Hi everybody, it's Leslie here again. Um, this is a follow-up to my spinning puzzle cards video from the other day, which I know lots of people have seen already. Um, if you've not seen that, you might want to go back and watch that first, so I am going to refer to it. So if you've not seen that, maybe, you know, head to my channel, check that one out first. That's the spinning puzzle cards. Jump straight in. So I've done a bit of prep in advance and I'm using Blooming Mandalas from Alter New. And we're going to do a variation and we're going to do some different shapes. So I thought I'd try and do something with different colours. So we're going to do different shapes from circles. So all the spinning puzzle cards I did the other day had circles on them. And hopefully this one is going to be out of hexagons. And I'm going to try it in a couple of different ways. And all I'm doing to start with is I'm stamping my greeting in the middle. And I just picked something that fit on the smallest hexagon die that I'm going to use. Just so it'll fit in there. And I'm not actually going to chop the greeting up if I can avoid it. If some of it gets chopped, I'm not too concerned. I've just stamped that in Versamark sticky ink and I'm going to emboss it in... Wow embossing powder, this is the bright white opaque. This greeting is from this set, which is actually the Hunky Dory Rays of Light Stamp and Twist. So if you've ever seen the turnabout stamps, sorry, that's my dog making a funny noise trying to get out the door. There with. Yeah, so this is from a Hunky Dory stamp and twist which is like the turnabout stamps. I've already got a mask that I've just fussy cut round my greeting ready. I've not got that on there very well. Ready to pop in the middle and pop around my greeting. So that's all ready to go. I'm going to put some more static on. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm inking up the big mandala and this is going to make hopefully a really complicated puzzle card. I thought we've done simple easy ones so let's do a really nice big complicated one and this is a big stamp so I've just stood up to get some nice pressure behind it and this mandala nearly fits on this hexagon just not quite. It's close, but not quite. And now you can probably hear my dog barking to get in. And I can't leave my door open, sadly, because I live in the Heathrow flight path in Windsor. And you can hear background noise on my videos if I leave my door open while I'm filming. And also on top of that today, there's been sound checks all day for an event that's happening in a local park tomorrow. Dogs are back in. I have two dogs, but only one of them tends to bark. The other one just follows. Sorry, I got interrupted because my dog was trying to eat one of my wooden mounted stamps. You'd think she was a puppy, but she's not. She's an eight year old. She's an English Springer Spaniel and she's a kind of not. So, I'm going to very carefully take my mask off so that I don't get embossing powder all over it. And I'm going to do the same thing on here. So hopefully you can see that's all heat set on there. All I'm going to do is the same thing that I've done with my circle dies. I'm going to stick these together and I'm actually just going to use this is just a thin piece of um, magnetic mat thing it's the stuff that you can store your dies on it's a really thin bit but I'm just going to line these up in here because and I've got them cutting side down at the moment because it makes it easier to wiggle them and them not all move around. 
when you're trying to stick them together. So they look fairly evenly spaced. So I'm just going to stick these together with some washi tape, just like I did with the circled eyes. And I could obviously have done this and cut this from a whole sheet, but I just wanted to make sure I'd got my placement right. So I could have done it the other way. And I don't really need the outer die on here this time because the outer one's already cut. So I'm actually just gonna take it off. So I'm just gonna run that through my die cut machine. I haven't got die cut cam on today. Now, my idea with this card was to do different color layers underneath so that when you turn this, you'll actually end up with a fun pattern. So let me show you what I mean. So here's my biggest one, which I'm gonna to stick to this piece of paper. And to inlay on that, I've got a different color. And that I'm kind of going ombre with this. So when this is out of position, you'll see some of this peeping out. And I thought that might just be a fun, different way to do it. Okay, so what I've got, and I actually made a minor error, but it's okay. I'll show you what I did. Is So now I've got my inner one, and I have stuck it to another piece just to make it a bit thicker because it had warped a little bit with the heat um, and to bring it up to the same thickness as my other pieces. Um, so it's quite thin card, this as well. So I've got this one. When you offset that one, you just get the same colour peeping through. When you offset the next one, you get a lighter colour peeping through. And then if you offset it again, you get a different colour. So you get these little pops of colour coming through when you rotate it. And my intention is that I'm going to have this ring spin as well. So the same will happen again, that you'll get this little pop of colour. So I'm going to put my hole through and stick this all on a card and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better what I mean about the colour popping through. The error I made was I should really have, I backed them all with the same colour. So what I should have done was that with this because it's ever so slightly showing on the edges, but I don't think you'll notice that. So this should really have had the same navy blue back as these ones. And then this one's going to get stuck down. So let me get all these with a hole in. I did it the same way. I made myself a paper template just with my biggest die. Folded it, folded it, so I knew where the centre was. Of course, the card blank I had pulled out was a 15 centimetre square one, rather than a six by six, so just to show you the difference, this is a 15 centimetre square card blank and this is a full six by six inch one and my die didn't fit. Do you ever have one of those days where pretty much everything that can go wrong does go wrong? I'm having that day today. I just realised that I filmed all of that without my lights switched on. So there we go. You might be able to see what I'm doing better now. So just like I did for my circle puzzle cards, I'm just putting foam tape 
all around. Giving it plenty of support because it's interactive, people are going to fiddle with it, hopefully. So you don't want it all being wobbly. As you can see now, this all spins. So the whole thing, and when you spin it, you get that little extra pop of colour from the one underneath. So this is a much more complicated puzzle because, of course, it's only really going to properly line up in one position and you think you've got the right one and then you don't. So this is a real tricky puzzle. Yeah, so I quite like the idea of having the little pop of colour showing from underneath and you could do it with a rainbow, I thought, which might be quite fun. Um, I was just going to show you this. I did start out doing this a different way and without the layers idea and having separate panels, I stamped and embossed on four different colours for this one. So starting with white and then a pale blue and ombre blue, basically. Put them all in, lined up, temporarily taped together like this, stamped the top one, took it out, stamped the next one, took it out, stamped the next one and took it out and then stamped the last one. So that's the way around I did it. Um, so yeah, so it's a fun idea. It just means you have to stamp the image one, two, three, four times if that's how many shapes you've got. But it does work. It works as a puzzle card. And I thought I could, because this is white on white on the back layer, I did think I could even ink around the edges. And you could even have the ink coming up onto all the layers as well. So it was, you know, make sure you've solved it before you do that, though. So it's matches. So... That was another idea, another way to use this with that so that you could have different coloured layers. But I think for the puzzle idea, it does work better if it's one like coherent picture, as in they're all on the same colour. So I thought a good way to, you know, bring some different colour in if you were doing it like this way was using my liner idea to give you these pops of colour when you turn it. So that was another idea that was using hexagon dies but you could obviously use the hexagon dies with any image just like I did and keep the liner piece the same colour like we did with the circle dies and then it wouldn't be so obvious so that was another couple of ideas working around the same kind of thing and then I thought I would show you this one next so I coloured this image and posted a video of it. I coloured it a couple of days ago and I just posted the video of it today is as I'm filming, which is Friday. And this one, uh, this is a Stamps by Me image. And I'll link the video that explains what stamp and everything it is. I thought I could use these in my really, really ancient... I think these are one of the first die sets I ever got. And these were X, these are X-Cut, which is part of Do Crafts. These are X-Cut dies that have been out for years and years and years. So these were nesting flowers. And obviously you can make flowers out of these. But I thought it worked for this as well. And um, if anybody has seen it online, if anybody follows Sam Calcott from Mixed Up Crafts, I had this idea to do this to this when I did my original puzzle die, uh, puzzle video, puzzle card video. And she kind of got the jump on me. I was going to do this, but unfortunately I didn't get around to doing it yesterday because I was in Oxford with my 17 year old looking around the university at their open day. And I was going to do this and I'd coloured the image ready to go, but I hadn't got round to making this part. So, Sam Calcott saw my video and or at least photos of what I'd done and she did her own using I think it was a rickrack die that she used but I'd already had this idea to do it so she kind of got the jump on me and borrowed my idea with the spinning puzzle card and then did it with a different shape now I thought this would be fun 
in the same way on my circular spinning puzzle card video, I thought I could use my brad as the centre of the flower. On my spinning puzzle card, I did a butterfly. And on the butterfly, I made sure that the brad landed on his head so that the brad became the butterfly's head. So I thought I could do something similar with this, but make sure that my centre point lands in the middle of that flower. And I've already got these pinned together. So I thought I'd just like use my pin and get that in the centre. And then I can poke that through and I can see there's obviously you could if you didn't have tape on it, you could be able you'd be able to see better. But I've just looked under my die and made sure now that that's sitting pretty much over the centre of that flower. It doesn't need to be really, really accurate. So we'll see how this looks on this image. Oh, and I am actually also at the same time, I might as well do it all in one go. I'm going to cut this out and I decided I was just going to cut this out with this square die. This is out, just out of my nesting squares and I'm going to put it quite near the top because I thought this area here, I could pop a greeting perhaps down there and I'm going to use this outer, but the piece of card that I had this on isn't actually square. So I wanted to make sure that I ended up with something close to square. Just make sure this isn't going to shift. Seeing as I've lined everything up and I don't want to damage any of my die. So I'm just going to take this off screen and run it through my die cut machine. I did, ahead of time, just cut out all the extra little pieces that I'll need for this. So, like I did in my spin spinning puzzle card video that just used circles, all we need to do again is glue these onto the back of piece. And I think when Sam did her video, she didn't put a liner piece in um, because she wanted them to drop in together and sort of lock into place. Now, I think I still prefer my way that because if you do that, it does make it really quite tricky to make it spin. So if it's locked in there, it's hard to make it spin. So I'm going to keep going with my method, which is to put these together and put a liner piece in on each layer which is why I need two of all the different sizes rather than just the one and then the top image. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these all together. OK, so same idea. I am going to line all these back up because if my centre point is slightly out at all, I want it to match up properly when the puzzle is complete rather than when it's in one of the other directions. And then I want the back piece as well because I want this one to spin so I need an extra one at the back. Exactly the same way as I did with the circle and the hexagon. Just cut out some scrap paper, fold it in one direction, fold it in the other to find the centre. You can eyeball it. Again, I'm rubbish at being able to get things even. I can't hang pictures straight. Somebody always comes behind me and straightens them. So just make life easy for yourself and make a little template if you like me. If you haven't got a crocodile big bite and you want to make a few of these cards, I would recommend it because it does make life a lot easier. And then I just want to find a really pretty little brad to go through the middle. And I've got these tiny little white flowers that I thought might be fun, but I'm not sure if their little legs are long enough. Let's have a check. Yeah, I think, yeah, their little legs are too short, so they're no use. Have I got anything else? I'm thinking maybe, maybe instead of a flower centre, I've got these little dragonfly ones. 
which I think came from when Lakelands did crafts many years ago. So yeah, my original idea had been to make it the flower centre, but I think I quite like my little green dragonfly on there. What do we think? You know what, I'm going to go with it. Let's go with the green dragonfly. And pop him in the middle of the flower. So I've just cut myself a mat from this nice pale pink, which is just the next size up in my nesting dies. So yeah, so it's going to go something like this. Let's get all this stuck down. You want it so that when it's in its solved position, it does line up. And there's always a little bit of wiggle room with the brad going in the middle. But there we go. So yeah, I'm actually really pleased with that, with my little dragonfly. And right down to the centerpiece, they'll all turn. So there we go, there's it solved. When it's further away, you can definitely still see the image, even though it's quite a pale, washed out watercolour effect. If I bring it up close, you can see we can give it a nice mix. So there we go. I finished this card off just with a little happy birthday to you die cut, which I just inked in something that was close to the ink colours that I'd used on one of the flowers. So, yeah. That was really quick. And this was, I did a review video of the Crafters Companion Say It With Style set, which is a huge set after feeling it sold out. But if you're interested in where that came from, it's one of these where you stamp loads of things all in one go on one stamp plate and you die cut them out all in one go. But I think it might have sold out because they were offering it at 60% off. I said in the video, I'd stamped them all just in black VersaFine onto white stamping cards so that I could ink them and have them ready to go just to match up with any card that I was making. So yeah, that's quite a complicated puzzle, especially if you don't know. You could definitely, on an insert, stamp yourself the original image. So you could have like a an insert that was stuck just on the back and then stamp the image that is what they're aiming for and then have on the inside your personal greeting so i think that'd be a nice way when it's a really complicated image to show you know and then you can add stamp in to it and then the other one that i made today was this one this one obviously i just did a bit of masking to get my greeting flat in the middle and yeah and uh, like to show you the different way to get a bit of a different colour theme going on, different pop of colour for when it's, you know, out of place. So it'd be nice to send it with it like that. And again, you could do the same thing, do an insert and show, and then you can write puzzle card, solve me or something like that in your personal message. But yeah, this one's really tricky because it's really complicated to get the lines to line up. So I'm not going to solve it on camera. But trust me, it does work. <laughs> yeah, I really like that one. And I'd actually designed that so the it's a it's a top fold, a tent fold. But yeah, I hope that inspires you to go and have a look at what nested dies you've got. Because if, mo I know most people have got circles, but just for a bit of variation, people have, you know, got all sorts of different nested dies. Like I say, these ones, I think, are some of the first dies I ever bought. So that they've got to be more than 20 years old. And that's the whole set. So it's not a huge set. You don't need massive sets. So I didn't miss any out on these. I used the whole lot, right down to the tiniest one in the centre. So, yeah, if you've got anything that's... It's got to have lines of symmetry. I don't think, like, a triangle, I don't think would work particularly well. Um... Anything that's obviously got a line of symmetry so that when you do spin it out of place, anything like that would work. So anything that really you could draw a circle around it and it's still 
fit within a circle. So a hexagon, hexagons, ox, octagons, like I say, any sort of nesting flower shape like these ones are. Like I said, Sam Col Calcott used a circle that had like a rip-rack border, so it was a wobbly outside line. I've got some scalloped circles. I think it worked really well with scalloped circles. I have got an idea to do it with a star. So I think that might be my next video, seeing how um, an image that I put on a star comes out. We'll see if it, how well it works. So there you go, two more puzzle cards ideas. Hopefully you get the idea with this you know, with the extra pops of colour peeping out. I might have another go at doing something with more like rainbow colours so you can see what I mean a bit better. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one again. And if you did like it, if you could give me a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, that would be amazing. Thanks for watching. Bye.